if anyone wants to let people know, I know we have people out and are wanting to text when we're going to start. That time is now. I want to take care of a few orders of business to start with. One, we talked about the cell phones. I'd greatly appreciate them to be off, or at least to silent out of respect. If you need to use the restroom through this, please go out those back doors, re-enter through those doors, and make it as you know unnoticeable as possible. I want to thank everyone for being here to first and start with. I'd said earlier this week, and even this, this morning at the funeral home, that Carson will always be Jason and Mandy's son. He'll be his grandparents' grandson. But last Friday, he became this community's boy. We've learned a lot this week about who Carson Hughes is. I myself was probably guilty of knowing how talented that young man was. But in more than his talent is that he has made it to be somebody that I want to strive to be. In meetings earlier this week, we discovered through his girlfriend Kelsey that he had created his own watermark. That was his new watermark that has been shared this week. Kelsey shared it with Jason and Mandy. They decided to share it with the world. That's Carson's signature. I hope you find this service to be one of the most inspirational things you'll ever see in your life. To me, putting it together, it certainly has been. begin the services now. I'm looking at the Northern Lights right now. This is insane. It's like 12.30 at night in Indiana. First time i ever seen the Northern Lights. I'll show you guys the images sometime. I 
think to myself What a wonderful I want to say good evening to everyone and thank you guys all for coming. It's overwhelming to see this many people all gathered in the same place. If you guys would bow with me, we're going to start this service off with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Lord, you tell us in your word that you are close to the brokenhearted, and you save those who are crushed in spirit. And Lord, as I look around at the multitude of, of people gathering here on behalf of Carson, I do see folks who fit that description. Some hurting, some are broken, some are lost. A lot of us are confused. Please wrap your loving arms around them and, and draw as close to them as possible. You tell us that you're close to those who are mourning. And God, we know that you're our comforter. I pray that you would comfort each one of us. I pray, Lord, for a peace that surpasses all understanding that you speak of in your word. For wisdom in this confusion and then you'd give each one of us a, an extra dose and measure of trust. Help us to realize that we're not alone in this. You're with us in this tough time of grief and sorrow. Lord, help us to trust that you're still in control. Lord, I pray for the Holy Spirit just to take over this service and come into this place. It's in the name of Jesus we pray and all God's people said, Amen. Good evening. We are here today to honor an exceptional young man that is the true meaning of someone who does the right thing. I've been associated with Carson and his family for a very long time. During that time, I've watched him grow into someone who represents the model of how you should go about life. As you can see in the picture above, Carson had a passion for baseball, along with many other passions. Obviously, anyone who knows me knows that I've had the same passion over a majority of my lifetime. Baseball's been a huge thing. His dad, Jason, played for me. His brother, Corey, played for me. And Carson played for me. It was in baseball where I saw Carson really develop into a fine, young student athlete in the early part of his high school career. Not only did he show this in baseball, but he showed it in other sports he played, such as basketball and soccer. His loyalty, his determination, his dedication, and perseverance is something any coach would admire in their student athlete. This year, Carson expressed to me how excited he was to play baseball this spring. Every year we do some type of fundraiser. And Carson was determined to get out and sell many discount cards as he could, and did he ever. He was our top salesperson this shows you the quality of leadership and how Carson was determined 
to achieve this goal. Countless times I have witnessed Carson be the first one to congratulate a teammate, or encourage a teammate when something wasn't going right. We're playing a game when he was a sophomore against a conference opponent. And Carson was hit in the arm by a very hard throwing fastball. But he stayed in the game and remained in the game. Well, our team got our three outs, and this is like the 10th inning. So we're going into the 11th inning. Carson trots out to second place, second base, even though he's in extreme pain. But won't tell any of us. So it was our turn to come to at bat, and lo and behold, we scored a run. And again, who was the first one out there to congratulate the runner who scored the winning run? It was Carson. Shortly afterwards, we found out he had a broken arm. He was saddened, but he was determined to get back and play before the season ended. And he played, and he played extremely well in the sectional that year. Things like this make young man, things like this make this young man stand out. I could share a lot of stories about him. And you know how all of you know all of you know how I like to talk. But I will keep it to that. He's a very passionate team player. Another instance with that infectious smile, Carson would say, Hey, what are we going to do today, Mr. B? Now he didn't say that every day to me, but many days he would walk by me and say that. You know, that was not only on the baseball field. But that could have been just seeing him go through the gym or working as a student aide in the athletic office. Always willing to help and being there when you needed him. That's another trademark of this young man. Willingness. Willing to do things for others. To me, this is a refreshing sight because you didn't have to ask him several times as he was there to accomplish the task. Academically, Carson took his studies seriously and received high marks that would propel him in the, into college, preferably Purdue University. Yes, many young people achieve this. However, Carson had a real passion again come out, and that is preparation to get to this point is something that should be very admired. Not only is Carson concerned about athletics, academics, but many times I would see him visiting his grandparents who just lived down the road from the high school. This is a testament to a young man who put family as a very high priority on his daily life. Always there to greet his parents, his grandparents, or any of his relatives when they would come and watch him play his sports. Countless times I would see him approach them and talk with them before a game or after a game. Again, this is showing you loyalty to his family. Not too many times do you see high school students get along and have a boyfriend and girlfriend relationship as Carson and Kelsey did. Anytime I would see them, they would have a big smile on their face. And they seemed to be like two peas in a pod. So there is your example of commitment. Commitment to another individual and treating them with the utmost respect. Finally I, finally, I would like to talk about the passion Carson developed over the past couple years. And that is his love of being in the outdoors. Thousands upon thousands of pictures of wildlife and scenery with Carson always reflecting upon them. You've already noticed that. You've already witnessed that in this short clip. I remember when I bought a print from Carson last fall. 
at Bricktoberfest. And it was one of the places that's very dear to me. I've been fortunate to go there twice in my life, and that's Yellowstone. And it was a picture of Yellowstone Lake. I look at that picture, and it reminds me of the peace of the national parks. And Carson captured it in his photo. In closing, I have to try to speak from my heart and honor this young man for the many things that he did here. Not only in our community, but in many other areas of our country. I would like to take this time to express my sincere, heartfelt sympathy to the entire family of Carson and the Jacksondale community and the many people who have become followers of Carson's social media accounts. Once again, I have been honored to share comments about the life of this terrific young man who will be sadly missed. I know Carson's looking down and smiling at us. Hey, good evening. I'm uh, Stephen Harmeyer with the 812, and some of you may be asking, uh, why am I up here? You know, a few weeks ago, I did not know uh, Carson really, really that well, but that has drastically changed. And I have learned so much about him and the gifts he is still giving to this world. But before I talk about Carson, I want to speak to his friends and classmates. One way that you can honor Carson is by never forgetting his parents and, so, and supporting them and stopping by their house not just this week, but six months from now or six years from now. And that is just as, as important as the support you have given over the past week. Now on to Carson. Do you know how much he loved his parents? The passcode to his cell phone was their wedding anniversary. I believe it's 020903, is that correct? Yeah, my apologies, 020902, that's my fault. He also loved his girlfriend, Kelsey, and those two would get dinner, go out to the park, and just watch the sunset. We all know how great of a photographer he was, but I think his work tells a much greater story, a story that every student and young person can apply in their own lives, and that is to truly follow your passion. The reason he got so good, so quick at photography is because he loved the entire process, from being at the park, to editing the photos, to putting them online. Another lesson that we could take from him, that it's a busy world outside, Take time to slow down and have patience. The reason he was so successful with his wildlife photography is that he waited for the perfect moment and didn't settle for anything, anything less. And he, and he also was not selfish about his gifts. I just found this out last night. I got it, I've, of course, we've gotten so many messages and emails, but I got an email. Um, someone wanted to let me know that Carson had recently volunteered to, uh, coming up soon to teach photography to middle school students. I did not know that. You know, that's another example, um, or in another lesson from Carson, when you have a talent as good as his, you give it back to others. There are so many stories I've learned of him this past week, and they are all truly, they truly show how pure and amazing his heart was. I now want to share a personal story between Carson and I. The reason he was featured on this magazine back here, it was our first magazine. He was chosen because of, his, of how his work truly represents the beauty of Southeast Indiana, that we so often overlook. So with this magazine that hadn't came out yet, back in January, I stopped by the school 
and I interviewed him for a video we were going to put to promote that this magazine was coming. And I asked him, what inspires you to be a photographer? This was his answer. Quote, sometimes I go to the park and have bad days where I don't get any photos, but I still have so much fun. But then there's days you get a lot of photos. You have to have those bad days to have them incredible days. And it's really just a balance. Those are Carson's words. So if you really want to be like Carson, find your passion, go after it, and then use it for the good of others. So even if you have a bad day at the park, your passion and talent can be seen all over the world for many more years to come. And that's how you can be like Carson. Thank you. certain points in our careers as educators, teachers come across students that make us better people. These students remind us how we should really live our lives. Carson is one of those students. Carson is an office assistant with the athletic department. Many of the tasks he is asked to perform are not very exciting. However, Carson always did them with a smile. Recently, Carson was asked to remove some lobby decorations that were up in the lobby from basketball season. I'd like to show you how Carson elected to accomplish this task. While he was doing this, several students came by, and he stopped what he was doing to have a short conversation with each and every one of them. He also stopped to watch the marching band outside practicing. A student came by and asked him for a balloon. Carson stopped what he was doing, carefully removed a balloon from a bunch, and handed it to the student with a smile. Once he was done popping all of the balloons, he stepped back and admired his own work. Here's a video Carson took. He continued to work on removing the display, taking care to preserve all of the pictures that were on the wall. Of course, he did this by sticking the pictures all over his arms and legs and back and shoulders. When the bell rang, Carson stayed until the lobby was cleaned up. He didn't have to do so, but that's who he is. Several other students saw Carson cleaning up the mess and volunteered to help. Some of you may be wondering why I relay this story. Carson's actions remind me of some very valuable lessons. Be kind to others. Do simple acts of kindness.
Be good to everyone we encounter. Say hello. Support each other. Invest a few seconds into others whenever we have the opportunity. Find joy and beauty in everything we do. Laugh. Smile. Approach every task with enthusiasm and be present in the moment. Finish what you start. Take pride in a job well done. Go the extra step to be sure it's done, it is done right and lead by example. By how Carson lives his life, it teaches us how we should live ours. Thank you, Carson, for reminding me how to be a better person. Every teacher who has taught Carson also knows he's a great student. Through his academic efforts, he has earned the following academic achievements. A graduation medal with a red, blue, and white ribbon. Interconnected yellow and blue cords recognizing him as a recipient of the Governor's Work Ethic Certificate. A single yellow cord identifying him as a member of the National Honor Society. A medal on a yellow ribbon as well as a white cord to signify the Academic Honors Diploma. And a medal on a blue ribbon as well as a black cord to recognize a Technical Honors Diploma. Ladies and gentlemen, Carson graduates from Jackson Dell Junior Senior High School with a 4.01 GPA. Carson has earned 55 high school credits, including eight he earned before he even entered high school. He has 31 college credits. And now I take great pride in presenting Superintendent Sam Melton. Mr. Melton, I confirm that Carson Michael Hughes has completed all the requirements to graduate in the state of Indiana. Mr. Melton, would you please present Carson's diploma to his parents? First, I want to say thank you to Jason and Mandy for allowing me to say a few words about your son. It truly is an honor. Thank you to the rest of the Hughes and Hoffman families, to Ted and Marlene, the family you've raised, and the grandson that we are here to celebrate are simply amazing. Over the past 10 days, I'm sure you all, like me, have gone through every possible emotion. First, it was fear and disbelief then doubt and worry and hope, then anger and sadness, then regret, guilt, hopelessness, and then for me it was some more anger. <clears throat> but where I've landed up over these last 10 difficult days 
is thankfulness. I'm thankful that my path crossed with Carson Hughes. That I was able to have the opportunity to teach and coach such a great kid. That I was able to witness someone who did everything right on the court or the field, in the classroom, and in his life. I'm thankful that I got to see someone find their passion at such a young age and then to excel at it so quickly. I'm thankful that I got to see Carson's passion for life come out on the basketball court as well. Carson was normally very reserved and quiet, and he didn't have a lot of muscle on him. But he had a ferocious yell and flex after every big shot or big play. All of us Jacksonville fans will forever have one of those screams and flexes ingrained in our minds forever from the first game this past season against South Ripley. The Eagles are up one. It's 159 remaining. The five seniors on the floor for Jacksonville worked the ball around, frantically trying to run out the clock. The Raiders are desperately chasing the ball around, knowing if they can force just one more turnover, they'll most likely win the game. Cummer gets trapped up top, and he finds Dwanger in the middle, who kicks it back out to Coleman, who quickly swings it to the corner to Borgman. Dwanger cuts the block and catches the post feed. He spins to the baseline but runs out of room. He spies his best friend. Number 12, spotted up in the corner right over there, wide open. The pass is just to his right, but Hughes is able to snag it out of the air, saving it from going out of bounds. The South Ripley defender hustles out to take away the shot. Head fake. The green jersey flies by. One dribble left, he squares up. Is he actually going to take this shot, is what I thought. Holy cow, he is definitely going to take the shot. <laughs> he rises and lets it fly as the green jersey flies back in front of him to contest. Everyone in the gym holds their breath. Nothing but net. The crowd goes wild. Flex, yell, the Eagles win. That'll never get old. What an awesome moment for Carson and our team, and especially for his dad. Can you put the next picture up for me? Here are our seniors after that game. They always played for each other and loved each other. I'm thankful that Carson's picture will forever hang in the gym right over here. That was a big, big goal for uh, me and his dad. It'll hang right over there joining the rest of the Jacksonville greats, including his dad and Aunt Julie, who are on the back wall. Could you put the next one up, please? I'm thankful for this picture behind me that we took the day before we went on spring break just two weeks ago. Every year, I've gotten a picture with my seniors and the plan was to take it on senior night. But amongst all the commotion, we were not able to. Then my plan was to, to do it at the sectional before or after one of the games. But the timing was never right, and we won the first two games. And I thought, all we have to do is win one more game, and I'll get my picture with my guys after the championship. But it wasn't to be. So a few days go by, and I text the boys asking for a favor, to do their old emotional coach a solid and put their uniforms on one more time to take a group picture with me. 
And even though they looked absolutely ridiculous, wearing blue jeans, boots, and basketball jerseys. And we had to have Coach Bradshaw take the picture in the middle of seventh grade PE class. They did it for me, and they did it for each other, like they always did. None of us knowing that this would be the, la the last thing we ever did together. A basketball team is, is really a family. You don't always agree or get along. Everyone has to sacrifice for each other. And no matter what, you love each other. After losing our last game, I said my little piece in the locker room. And then I asked the team if anyone wanted to say anything. It was quiet for a little bit, but then Caleb White stood up and said, and I'll paraphrase, <laughs> can't always use Caleb's all of his language. He said, I love you guys. Thanks for being my teammate. We hear stories about other teams or kids not getting along. And even when we were losing every game, I still loved playing with you guys. And then they all stood up and hugged each other. It was a really special moment. I know I can speak for the other five seniors in this picture that there was no better teammate than Carson. This isn't on my little script, but in my years, four years coaching, we've had 23 seniors. Carson's right here. One of them tragically passed away in an accident a few years ago, and one's in the Marines. Every other kid is, was here today. Every, every kid that he ever played with is here today. Uh, that's pretty cool. Whew. But you know the thing that I'm most thankful for is that every time for the rest of my life, when I'm sitting on my porch swing and a cardinal lands nearby, or I spot an eagle, soaring overhead on my way home from work. Or I see a doe and her two fawns grazing in a field by my house. Or I catch a glimpse of an otter or a beaver swimming down a creek while on a jeep ride. I will think of Carson Hughes and know that this world is a better place because he was in it. Let's all be more like Carson. I love you, buddy. Thank you.
Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Konishek. I'm a wildlife photographer from Colorado. Over the past year, I've gotten to know Carson very well. I eventually became somewhat of a mentor to him in his wildlife photography journey. It went, it went from that to a friendship to a brotherhood. Carson was a part of my everyday life. I'd come off the mountain, I'd tell him what I saw, he'd come off the lake and he'd tell me what he saw. That was the first thing that we did. <sighs> Sorry. Um, this kid had everything it took to do anything that he wanted to do. He had the work ethic, he had the dreams, he had it all. He could do anything that he could have ever wanted to do. <sighs> A story that I love to tell that talks about who Carson is, is we would often send each other funny videos on social media. I sent him one at two in the morning while I was working a night shift. He responded right away and I was like, buddy, what are you doing still awake at two in the morning? And uh, he's like, oh man, I'm working on my college courses. I'm like, oh, that's great. And, but weren't you just at basketball practice like 10 hours ago? And then you went to the park and looked for otters for a couple hours after that? So he, he, that just shows you he had it everything it took to be amazing at anything he ever wanted to. And if you didn't think that was enough to, he has an amazing family, has an amazing girlfriend, so many friends. He kept up with so many people online, including myself. But that wasn't enough for him. One thing that he said to me is, I wish I could have two of me so one could do one thing and one could do the other. I'm like, buddy, you were, you were insane. <laughs> I was able to pass on as much knowledge as I could to Carson in our time together and I promise you he passed on just as much to me Carson showed me what, what it takes to be a hard working person beyond what I could believe he, he showed me how to be close to his friends while achieving high goals just, he was just an amazing person uh, I'll never meet anybody like him again. He's just an absolute one of a kind, and I appreciate everybody for being here, and I thank the Hughes family for letting me speak. I love you, buddy. Rest in peace. My name is Blake Sutton, and I am a teacher and coach here at Jackson Dell. I would like to first say that it's a true honor to be up here speaking on behalf of Carson Hughes. I want to thank the family for allowing me to share not only my memories of Carson, but also the irreplaceable relationship he and I shared. Carson Hughes and his impact on my family is without a doubt something special. There aren't too many evenings in our household that go by where he isn't the entertainment. Whether it's my wife and I choosing one of his many pictures to order, while I recall every moment Carson shared with me, or retelling the daily conversations he and I had during our aid period to Amanda, or finally my boys pretending to be the Jacksonville boys basketball team with my youngest Jackson proudly running out from from his room screaming, I'm Carson Fuse. <laughs> Carson Hughes is and will forever be a part of my family. 
I was privileged to have Coach Carson for two years and have him as a student aide this school year. Carson had a great senior year basketball season, even though it didn't end as he would wanted it to. He wanted that sectional pretty bad. Carson was so fun to coach. He knew his role. He knew what he was good at, and he even knew his limitations as a player. Uh, us coaches did not have to tell Carson that he needed to work harder, don't do too much, or give more effort. And he only got better at this as the season went on. You could see it in his expressions. He wanted to hit every single three, and he wanted to get every steal. On the surface, it appeared I was his coach, his mentor, role model, and his school dad, as some would say. It is difficult to describe Carson and I's relationship. It was uncharacteristic. It was not uncommon for me to get a late night text from Carson, sometimes about basketball, but more often, uh, but more often in excitement to show me what he caught on his camera the next day. Being friends with his dad, I already knew how good of a kid Carson was. And I was a lucky one to get to hear both sides of those stories. <clears throat> In particular, their trip to the valleys for Carson to see the elk was not on Jason's top list of fall break destinations, but it was definitely on Carson's. Jason would tell me how he had already mapped out where, he, where the closest hotels were and where the showers were and Carson's telling me how excited he is, how nervous his dad is, and just laughing about it. Carson had his dad sleeping in the back of a truck in freezing weather, but my favorite part was being able to hear both sides of those stories. But looking back at all the conversations, and as my relationship with Carson grew, little did Carson know how he inspired me. When, we walked in, when he walked into my classroom with this huge glow on his face and quickly got his com computer opened, I knew that I wasn't going to be lecturing the class that day. Carson had wildlife coverage to show me. <clears throat> Having Carson as a student aide was very special to me. I, I truly believe we both looked forward to that time of day when we could sit down with one another, talk about his wildlife photography, talk about his college plans, talk about how his mom wants him to get this scholarship done, but there's no practice after school, so he's got to go to the park. He never missed an opportunity. It was small, but second period when he came into my classroom as my aide, I looked forward to so much. We would sit there and look at pictures. He would show me how he edits his photos, how he crawled, how he kayaked, snuck up on or even how close he was to an animal at the park. Or tell me he stayed up till 4 a.m. the night before, even though we had a game, going through photos. I had this thing like Carson could see the joy in the present moment. Most of us are looking at what is to come or what's next. Carson could see the beauty in the now. We were all privileged to witness this ability firsthand in his video the Northern Lights. He became so close with the outdoors. And how lucky was I to get to hear <clears throat> every story behind every photo. How lucky are we that he has shared his joy with us through all the amazing moments and time he has captured. Carson gives us a perspective on life that is very hard to find. Our uncharacteristic relationship may have started very typical, but actually I aspired to be like Carson Hughes. These characteristics that Carson upheld will allow for his legacy to live on forever. Everyone here today is a testament to those characteristics and that he is an inspiration to us all. Romans 8:18. 8, the pain that you've been feeling cannot compare to the joy that is coming. May we all live our lives enjoying every precious moment God gives us, recognize the joy and the beauty surrounding us, whether great or small, and aspire to be a little bit more like Carson Hughes.
Well, good evening again, guys. Um, my name is Pastor Chad Schwaring from One Purpose Church in Batesville. I'm glad they put this picture up here. I didn't know that's what they were going to put up there, but I love, love, love that picture. I love his image on the right-hand side. Um, I was Carson's pastor, and he was my friend, and like many of you, I'm going to miss him dearly. Quickly, I'd like to say, when I heard Jackson Dell was canceling school and hosting this location for Carson's funeral, I thought to myself, that's first class, Jackson Dell. I think a lot of us know that you're not going to get that in a big city school. This is the only place you're going to get that kind of treatment, and um, I want to say we thank you guys for doing this. I think that's the right call. Amen. Yeah, that's worthy of a, a clap right there. And it is a real privilege and honor to stand before you and talk about a young man who lived an amazingly inspirational life, as the obituary said. And I hope most of you guys read that because it was a phenomenal obituary. Um, and just like a lot of you, I was down at the park and I was looking and I was believing. And then when all the dust settled and I went back home, I didn't have nothing better to do. So I'm scro scrolling through social media, just like a bunch of you guys. And... And it became abundantly clear to me that Carson lived a more full life than a lot of, in his 18 years, than a lot of people of that, of, of double or triple his age. And it just, it just blew my mind. And I'm so scrolling through social media and I got to see all the pictures that all of you just were posting and, and posting those memories. And it was just, it just overwhelmed me to see how many people that Carson impacted. I, I had no idea that young man had impacted so many. Of course, you hear the stories from the coaches. It's just off the charts, and I've seen pictures that I had no idea that were out there. Him of in front of beautiful mountains and, and holding hands with his beautiful girlfriend, Kelsey. Kelsey, he loved you so much, and I know you know that, but he loved you. And, and taking photographs with his dad at the, you know, those elk and, and painting the picture out here on his parking spot with mom and all the different things. It was just crazy. Corey, he loved you to pieces. I saw pictures of you guys, and I think you were holding him uh, a little piggyback ride there, and he loved you, Corey. He, there was memories, I know. Of course, there were fights, I'm sure, just like any brothers would have, but there were good memories, too, and, and I'm glad you guys have those. And looking at you, Jason and Mandy, you guys made a lot of those memories possible, and you guys raised him well, and he loved you two so much. You came in here on Saturday night and you told me, you said, actually you told the whole place we had a little prayer service that Saturday night and we didn't know what the future was going to hold at that point in time. And, and Jason, you'd mentioned, and this is off the cuff here, but that, um, how'd you put that? You said, you know, our lives did revolve around our kids, but you'll never, ever regret that. Looking back now, you're never going to regret that. And I'm, I th I'm thankful for that. But, but when you, you saw Carson and his love for others and his character that he possessed, you knew someone raised him well, didn't you folks? And that someone is you too. Well done, you guys. You guys did an awesome job. Amen. A lot of us know this, but Carson was someone who, who would help others anytime he could. And at church, we saw real talent in Carson, and we asked him to lead our visual technology team, and man, he grabbed his camera, and he just went to work, and he started helping immediately. And he came faithfully, and I'll tell you, when, when him and Kelsey would come together, and if you, if you ever saw these two, and the pictures both of them had, I wished I had one up here, you never knew where the smile was starting or ending, because both of them had a magnificent smile, and it was just, it was just beautiful. Um, but, but one thing you don't know about Carson is, is Every single time, any time he couldn't be at church, he would always reach out to my son or myself and he would apologize ahead of time that, and he'd say, hey, I'm sorry, I can't be there because this is going on. And, and, and my son would come and say, hey, Carson ain't going to be there today. And I tell you that story because what 18-year-old kid does that? I mean, come on, that's the, that's the guy he was. I, I loved him, I loved him, I loved him. And of course you did too or you wouldn't be here today. Carson, as we know, was a phenomenal photographer. I mean, to me, his, his, these pictures blow my mind. And he looked at life through a lens, didn't he? And Carson was amazing at having the right perspective. 
and having the right focus. And he saw things that I think a lot of people would just blow right over. They didn't see it, but he saw that. He had, a, he had an eye for that thing. And he'd go out, and of course, it's been talked about a little bit before, and none of us, you know, we didn't coordinate our stories here, but there's some similarities. And he'd go out to capture that perfect moment, and, and you know that he had to sit there and be very patient and slow way down and, and have to sit sometimes for hours in order to catch that eagle maybe taking off and just snap that thing in, in mid-flight or maybe waiting for that doe to cross the water at the break of dawn with maybe the dew still melting off the water. You guys have seen that picture. I think he won a contest for that one. But sometimes he'd wait for days to catch that elk in the right position or maybe he'd hike all day long to position himself in just the right place at just the right time of day to to look through that lens and capture that perfect moment. We all know that Carson was encouraged, an encourager on and off the field. And if Carson were here, I think he would try and tell us and encourage us to, man, be, be more patient with people. Amen. Slow down a little bit. And if you don't, you're going to miss the beauty of life. In the Bible, in Romans, I believe, captures something that Carson innately knew he just understood this that's, that's who he was romans chapter 1 verses 19 and 20 says since what may be known about god is plain to them because god has made it plain to them well that them is us folks it's, it should be plain it says for since the creation of the world god's invisible qualities his eternal power his divine nature has been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that people or without excuse. You see, we've got no excuse for not understanding that there is a God. And when, when Carson would look out at the world, he clearly saw the beautiful creation of God through those lenses. And all of creation and, and God's beauty points to the fact that there is a creator who made all of this. You wouldn't, and Carson, he, he knew this. When you look at a building, you'd never look at the building and say, well, that just happened. Something never comes from nothing. Somebody had to have had a blueprint for that thing, and somebody had to have created that building, amen? When we look at the world, we should see that God's fingerprints are all over this thing. And Carson saw that, and he understood that. And I, I realize this, I, I get this. Many of you may not believe the same way Carson did. I, I get that. But he made it so easy to believe in how much he believed. And you, you were convinced, and you knew what he believed. And you just knew there was something inside of him that, that was different. Of course, there was a love and a light and a hope inside of him that came from his belief in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Some of you guys may be hearing this for the first time, but I'm telling you, his mom and dad instilled those values in him from a young age. And I know now they're looking back and they're happy they did. I was watching, I was looking at it. Carson's Facebook page and I was scrolling through some of the stuff and he recapped all of 2023 and I think we've got a, a kind of a screenshot of something he said we got a little yellow highlighter around it I think but he said this all glory boy that's bright isn't it all glory goes to him and of course that was that was God that was him letting the world know that you know what I'm a Christian and I'm not ashamed for people to to see this and to know this and I'll, I'll say that he loved the Lord. And the Bible speaks of us loving others and loving your neighbor and leading them to Jesus. And, and Carson truly did love other people. And I believe in time, this is me interjecting here, but I believe in time we're going to see this come to pass. That's this. Carson will lead more people to Jesus through his death than he did while he was alive. And I, I believe that, folks. I really do. I'm convinced of that. The best hope we have through all this is knowing that Carson, as crazy as this sounds, he was prepared. And what I mean is, is he believed in eternal life. He believed in life after lasting. In, in, in John chapter 17, verse 3, it says, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you sent. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 14 kind of drives that home. It says, but I don't want you to be ignorant, brother. In other words, he's saying, don't go through life not knowing concerning those who have fallen asleep. And he's talking about those who have passed on before us. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. 
For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring him, those who sleep in Jesus. Well, Carson is asleep in Jesus, and I'm telling you, there's hope in that. And this is me just interjecting a little bit here, and I've had a couple of other people bring this to my attention too, but I, I saw it for myself. Isn't it unbelievably interesting that here in four days, we're going to be celebrating Good Friday, which is the day that Jesus rose, or I'm sorry, Jesus died on the cross for us on Good Friday. And of course, there's some similarities because Friday is the day that we lost Carson, isn't it? That's a day I'll never forget, and I'll bet you a lot of us are thinking the same thing, but there's a similarity there. And of course, this coming Sunday, we're going to celebrate Easter, which is the day that Jesus was raised back from the dead, and Sunday is the day that, that Carson came up out of that water. It's almost like he went down with the old man in a baptism and, and up with the new, and that's just me thinking out loud, but man, there's some similarities there. Now, in 2 Corinthians, and I, I don't go long here, 2 Corinthians 5, 8 says this, we are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. This body that you guys see here today, I want you to know, and some of us are hearing this for the first time, that's an empty shell because Carson is, is in the presence of the Lord right now. And I'm glad that, that we have this because we need closure, amen? We need to grieve, and that's part of this process. But Carson isn't there anymore. He's, he's in the presence of the Lord, and that gives me hope. And I, I get ready to close, but I'll bet you the moment that Carson, when he went to be with the Lord, and maybe he saw heaven for the first time, he was probably thinking, boy, I wish I had my camera right now so I could capture this moment. I, I, just, I just can picture him thinking that. And, and maybe just about that time, him looking over and, and seeing his Savior Jesus saying to him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And maybe then hearing Jesus say, because Jesus knows everything, you don't have to capture this moment because you're going to live in this for the rest of your life. You're going to live in this for the rest of eternity. Forget the camera. You don't need it because you're going to wake up one day and you're going to be in the presence of the Lord and the next day and the next day and forever. And, and I don't know about you folks, but that gives me hope. On February 2nd, which is his birthday, is that right? I, I was also scrolling. I think we've got another and it's going to be bright too, so roll with me. I'm sorry. But, but he, he wrote this. I think we've got it here. Yeah. As we see, it's, it's highlighted. First of all, I want to give all glory and thanks to the man above because nothing would be possible without him. You see, Carson understood, and he was ready. My question to each and every one of you, all of you in here, and those of you tuning in online, are you ready? I promise you, if Carson were here right now, he'd be asking, he'd want me to tell every one of you that he wants you to be ready. The Bible speaks of confessing with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believing in our heart that God raised him from the dead in Romans 10, 9. And it says, if we'll do that, the Bible says we will be saved. Carson would want every single person here to get saved because he wants to see you again. And I'll promise you this, he's in heaven and that's the only way we're going to get to see him again. Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life and no one comes to the Father except through me. And so I'm going to encourage each and every one of you. I'll be around. There's several other pastors here who will be around after we close this thing up. And I would love to talk with you about that. But I know Carson wants you to get saved. And so make sure you get that right, folks, before you leave this place. But I also want to encourage you to stop letting moments pass you by. Stop that. Seniors, I'm looking at some of you guys. You're sitting out here all over the place. Finish this school year strong. Amen. This loss can either make you bitter or it'll make you better. Don't let it make you better. Carson would want you to live life to the fullest. He would say, be patient, slow down, enjoy the life that God gave us. Look at life through Carson's lens and live life with the right perspective and the right focus.
name is Jason Hughes. I am Carson's dad. I am speaking on behalf of Mandy, Carson's mom, Corey, Carson's big brother, and Kelsey, Carson's girlfriend. Thank you all so much for being here to celebrate Carson's life. Mandy, who knows me better than anyone, was a little hesitant about me speaking tonight because I tend to ramble on and on when I am nervous. So I apologize if I just read this because I've been warned to avoid eye contact. <laughs> Carson was the final piece of the puzzle of our family. He was always one that could occupy himself for hours and was always in a good mood. I know it's cliche, but that kid always had a big smile on his face that would light up a room. Carson had a witty sense of humor about him. He could come up with the funniest comments to lighten any mood. Carson has always avoided the spotlight, and he would cringe at the fact that he has received so much attention over the last week. But he would love how many people have seen his photography, that have watched his reels, and has read his captions. The fact that he is now over 34,000 Instagram followers is nothing short of amazing. Carson would be so proud, yet still so humble. We spent a lot of our time enjoying the outdoors while camping when the boys were young. Then when they started travel baseball, we traded state parks for ball fields. Fast forward several years, we took an epic family road trip out west. We hit four national parks and two national monuments on that 14-day road trip. Carson learned that he could hold up his phone up to the binoculars to get a closer-up image. He fell in love with wildlife in the West. While in Yellowstone, it seemed like everyone had spotting scopes. So once we returned to Indiana, Carson started working on his Christmas list, Christmas list and a spotting scope was at the top. Come Christmas morning, a spotting scope was under the tree. Carson and Mandy drove out to Versailles State Park that next day to look for wildlife. On that very first trip out, they saw an eagle. He was so energized to be able to witness that encounter. Eventually, Carson transitioned to our digital camera that was like 15 years old at the time, but was able to take better quality images than his spotting scope and phone. He was always on the search for wildlife. Carson found an owl's nest at our property just outside of Osgood, and you would have thought the kid won the lottery. That might be the single encounter that turned this hobby into a passion or an obsession. He started watching YouTube videos about how to use all the settings on his camera, what settings to use for low light, bright light, still shots, motion shots, and anything else you could learn about photography. He then told his mom that her camera was junk <laughs> and that he needed to buy a new camera body and a more high-powered lens. He saved up his money and bought his new and improved camera and lens. He purchased these just before we left for Colorado with our friends, the Harlemerts, in July of 22. We traveled to all four national parks in Colorado with an emphasis on Rocky Mountain National Park. Now back to his lens. If you have ever seen Carson with that lens, it was truly impressive. He was so proud of that lens and loved to show others the images he captured with it. He kept learning and growing in his photography journey. The next thing we knew, Carson was saving up to, pay, to make a new purchase. Apparently, a mirrorless camera was the next step for better image quality. So the Canon R5, that was his new pride and joy, or maybe a close second. Behind Kelsey. A funny little side note about Carson. So Carson's number one pet peeve, I joked with him all the time about it. Carson's number one pet peeve was when anyone would say, 
your camera takes really good photos. He always said, well, that's like saying Michael Jordan uses a really good basketball. <laughs> Carson has made many friends from his photography journey. We've received letters and messages from people that have met Carson over the years at the park. Whether it was the gate attendant that he would stop and chat with to various individuals that encountered him on the water or on the bank, everyone could always tell it was Carson by the silver Ford Ranger with the black camper shell and kayak hanging out of the bed. Snicks, although I wasn't fond of that ugly camper shell, you absolutely made his day when you gave it to him. The day Carson brought it home, he pulled up smiling from ear to ear and said, dude, don't you just love my camper shell? It was free. And my response was simply, I can definitely tell it was free. <laughs> Carson always made for many friends from afar. He would talk about his friends in Alaska, Wyoming, and Colorado. I would hear him talk about his friend, Kevin Kay from Instagram. And we were like, he is not your friend. You do not even know him. He's probably a creeper. And Carson's response was always, dude, he is such an awesome guy. Well, now we know Kevin Kay is an awesome guy, truly Carson's friend, and now forever a part of our family. Carson aspired to be the best photographer he could be, so he followed the best photographers. Carson's photographer idol on Instagram was Isaac Spots. When we were learning or when we were planning a va family vacation back to Yellowstone and Grand Tetons, Carson just had to visit Isaac in Jackson Hole. However, this trip included not just us, but 12 family members, and we kept reminding Carson that the only way to go to Jackson Hole was if it rained the day we were scheduled to visit the Grand Tetons. We had to remind him that this trip is not just yours. So guess what? It was a cloudy, rainy day while we were there. That kid lit up when we walked into that camera store. He had just been able to capture a great gray owl. That's a whole other story for later. And I'll interject, this isn't in here, but some of these wildlife photos in here, you guys have no idea how much Mandy and I are yelling at him, saying, would you please hurry up? We've been here for three hours. <laughs> anyway, this great gray owl is just apparently a, a rare encounter that many photographers only dream of. Carson and Isaac talked about photography for a couple hours. It was the highlight of his trip. We are so thankful that Isaac took the time out of his day to spend with Carson. That very next month, we were blessed to take another amazing trip to the state of Washington with Carson's grandpa, Kim. Carson researched the areas that he wanted to photograph, and Mandy built the itinerary around Carson's points of interest. He absolutely loved the incredible scenery there, from the mountains to the rainforest and all along the coastline. We were able to witness a whale in the wild, an encounter we were so blessed to share with Carson. Locally, Versailles State Park was his second home. Carson loved to visit there. He yearned for foggy mornings because he said they created a moody image. He grew a deeper appreciation for the wildlife and scenery of southeastern Indiana, while always giving glory to God. It didn't matter if it were an eagle, a white-tailed deer, an otter, mink, beaver, turkey, snail, or even a covered bridge, Carson found beauty whenever he had a camera in his hand. Now we are blessed to see the world through Carson's lens, and it's something we will forever be grateful for. I also want to recognize another home away from home, and that is Jackson Dell. As you have already heard from Carson's coaches, JCD was a huge part of Carson's life. 
I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge Carson's teachers, the faculty and staff, his classmates of 2024, his teammates, his friends, and his many sports fans. He loved hitting that three and giving his flex. Carson walked these halls with you. He ran, in, he ran up and down this court with you. He ran on that soccer field with passion in his heart, and he was looking so forward to his senior year of baseball. And most importantly, he was so excited to graduate with you in May and begin his next journey. You all will be forever in our hearts. While I've given you a glimpse of Carson's photography journey, I also can't forget to share the kind of son and brother he was. Mandy and I were blessed with two amazing sons. Corey and Carson had a similarity in their love for nature. Our family's love for the outdoors and nature took us down many roads. One of my all-time favorite trips was when Carson talked, begged me into going to Cataloochee Valley for an elk rut located in Great Smoky Mountains in North Carolina. In true photographer fashion, we became one with nature, sleeping in the back end of my truck. His excitement during that trip was none like I've ever seen before. I will always cherish the time of me being a part of his passion by driving him around and serving as his, as his photographer's caddy. I am just so thankful to be able to be by his side witnessing some incredible sights. Carson and I were able to see the northern lights together, lay in several fields of grass together, and have many father and son conversations along the way. We shared many special late nights together, just sitting up talking about his dreams and aspirations. From college, to camper van life, to taking his photography business to the next level. One of his last efforts was to, was to create a new and more professional watermark for his art. With the help of Kelsey, we were able to get a copy of his final watermark that he created and intended to use. So to carry on Carson's vision, we will be fulfilling his legacy with a creation of a new website for Carson Hughes Photography. Because of Carson's attention to detail, please be patient as we work through this process. I also want to mention the love of Carson's grandparents, my mom and dad, Marlene and Ted Hughes, Mandy's mom and dad, Mr. and Mrs. Kim Hoffman. Your love for Carson was everything to him. He so enjoyed each and every moment, every special moment you spent with him. Carry those memories with you always. If we all just looked at life the way Carson did, by never wasting a moment, by being genuine, and kind to others, or by simply smiling when you go about your day, this world would be a much better place. In closing, I would like to share the following, a poem called, If You Could See Me Now by Patsy Deskins. If you could see me now, you wouldn't shed a tear, though you may not understand why I'm no longer here. Remember my spirit, that's the real me. I'm still very much alive though, if you could only see. I beheld our Father's face, I've touched my Savior's hand. The angels all rejoiced as I entered the promised land. Beyond the gates of pearl, I walked on golden streets. I've touched the walls of jasper, dipped my foot in the crystal seas. The beauty is beyond words, nothing can compare. I've even seen your mansion, someday I'll meet you there. Allow Jesus to be your guide. His word will show you the way. So please don't cry. We will meet again somewhere, someday. Fly high, Carson. We all love you. Thank you all for the continued prayers and support. We love you all.
finish us out with a closing prayer and then these folks over to my left hand side are going to sing a song that Carson Kelsey really liked enjoyed at church if you guys would bow your heads with me let's go to Lord in time of prayer as we finish out Lord in you in your word you tell us that you can make all things new and you paint a picture of heaven when you told us that You'll wipe every tear from our eyes and there's going to be no more death and no more mourning, no, no crying or pain for those who go before us or are in Christ Jesus. Lord, that gives me hope. And honestly, it makes me a little jealous of where Carson's at right now. We know that you're a God of all grace and you're calling us to eternal glory in Christ Jesus. You tell us in your word that you... It's not your will that any should perish and go to hell, but that all should have everlasting life. And I know that's what Carson would want for every single one of us. Lord, in the days and the, the weeks and the months to come, the, the Hughes family are going to need us, Lord. They're going to need them. Help them to know that their support group is far-reaching. Each and every one of us here would do anything for them. Carson referred to Philippians 4.13, which says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And I believe that includes getting us to the next season in our life, these tough times that are ahead. But we're going to be stronger, I believe, on the other side. Lord, help us with our unbelief. There's a lot of us that are struggling right now. Lord, help us to know that hindsight is 20-20 and you've got a plan and a purpose in this. Lord, be with us. Give us comfort. Certainly, give the Hughes family comfort. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Let's play.
we're just about to complete this service. Some of you know and some of you won't know, but Jason Hughes' relationship and mine goes back a long time. I would certainly say still to this point, there's never been a friend that I've spent more nights with that was at my house in high school and I was at his. My grandpa, I believe, coached Ted in baseball. Ted always would get my Uncle Larry in trouble. They have a relationship. I'll be honest, I didn't know this was going on Friday afternoon early. My daughter called me and she goes, Dad, we just finished the funeral and I was like, we'd had a busy week, it was Friday afternoon and I was like, it's time to unwind. Start a fresh week. Aubrey calls and she says, Dad, she was out of town. Have you heard about Carson Hughes? I go, Aubrey, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. No clue. She says, jump on, look on Facebook. I did. Probably within two minutes, I text Jason. And I said, I don't know what's going on, but I'm praying. And I can guarantee you I prayed as hard as I've ever prayed. That Saturday morning, I was probably one of the first ones at that park to walk. I was approached by media and said, what do you think? And I said, I got no thanks. We're here to find this kid. I want to get him home to his mom and dad. He's out taking pictures. I drove the back roads thinking, hey, that lake's not far from my house. He's going to come walking up over this hill. I drove past. I'd seen Mandy Wednesday of that week. I often leave my office. It's a car lot or a funeral home, and I drive out past, uh, out 300 north and down around Devil's Elbow just to detox for the day, just to say I'm going home for the day. Probably 75% of the time I do that a week. And I look that Wednesday night, and I see Mandy sitting on her new boat on her dock there on the pond at it's going to fill up someday. I waved and I thought, my gosh, that looks relaxing. I was there Sunday morning with other friends in here. And I think that that's when we became the realization of where we was at. That evening, we all we're sitting watching and listening and praying and hoping for that miracle. With that being said, they found their baby. I was really torn on what to do. How do you approach this? Do you approach this? I'll be honest, at that point I did not know if we would be involved with this service, I'll be honest, I didn't really care. I wanted to go to Jason's house. I drove up there. We hugged in that garage and cried like I don't think I've ever cried before. We went in the house. I didn't want to go in. There was people there. I didn't really want anybody to see me. He said, come in the house. And we talked. And we talked and I answered a lot of questions. And he said, can you just promise I'll see my boy? I made a promise. And I said, I got your back on this. And we went to work to honor the life of Carson. Monday morning, I guess it was Monday morning this week's been kind of a blur, but Monday morning I said, I'll call you and we'll sit down and we will talk and we'll figure this out. We sat down at their kitchen table. I tried to shut my mouth and I tried to listen, which I don't hear real well. I scribbled notes as hard as I could. I listened to everything they was trying to grasp, everything they was saying. Our first task was to 
to prepare an obituary. That was difficult. We came back, my notes were scribbly, I started, I had it proofread, I started, we proofread it, I had help, I got some help. We got the obituary done. Our primary focus became absolutely making certain that they could see their boy. But one thing was said to me, I've had so much people offer me help this week, and I'll be honest, I've really been tight cuff on who I've let in my inner circle. Because I wanted this to be an absolute special thing, and I felt the only way is to be controlling of it, to know every aspect that was going on. One thing I did delegate out that morning, they had listened, and Bill, could you put the next slide up? Hero. This word came up. A person who is who admired or idolized for courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. Jason and Mandy shared with me that that he had met his hero. How many people in this room have met their hero in real life? And not your mom and dad. How many people have met your true hero? A few, very few. Jason elated, and they were so excited in sharing that story. And things all fine. That was in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I don't know how many people paid attention to what I dressed Carson in. His Jackson Hole, Wyoming sweatshirt. That I've watched Jason move those strings a bazillion times this week thinking he's going to rip them off and take them with him. And if you want them, they're yours, buddy. So then they told me that this guy, can you put this up? This gentleman was his hero. I'll be honest, I had no clue. I probably spelled it wrong on a piece of paper. But I thought, that's pretty cool that he got to meet him. This guy has been recognized nationally, like in the wildlife industry, this guy's an all-star, recognized by the Smithsonian, 750,000 followers plus. And Carson got to meet him and shared time with him. So in my inner circle, my son became real important. He goes, Dad, what can I do? I said, you got one thing to accomplish. Get me a contact for a guy named Isaac Spots. I got a little bit something for you. He's not here. Isaac Spots, I had the opportunity. Will comes to me later on. He goes, Dad, I've got a cell phone. He says for you to call him this evening. He'll be in. I called Isaac Spots. I promised Isaac Spots after that conversation that I will be in Jackson Hole, Wyoming to meet that man. He was inspirational. Not only did he say no, he had followed this story. He goes, I had prayed for this guy. Can you tell me what's going on? What happened? Well, we talked for 30 minutes plus on the phone. He said, what can I do? I've got commitments. I can't be there. And I said, let's, can you do something like this? Can you send me some words? Can you do something? Go, Bill. Hey, everyone. My name is Isaac Spots. I am a wildlife photographer here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And I am filming this video in the same place where I had the pleasure of meeting Carson Hughes. And that is the camera store where I work at here. And last summer, he and his family came in here to meet me. And I had known Carson before I met him in person, just from social media. And I had messaged him back and forth. And he just was one of the most kind-hearted people that I had ever met. Before I had even ever met him in the camera store, I remember there was one day where I got a random message from him on Instagram where he just wrote me and said, Hey man, I know that the rule on Instagram is to look happy all the time, but I just wanted to know how you're doing. 
and check in on you. This random 17-year-old, who I'd never met at the time, sent that to me. And I don't think he'll ever know how much that meant to me at the time. Because who does that these days? It was incredible. And then his family came in here last summer, and he had messaged me that day because he had just seen a great gray owl, which happens to be one of my favorite animals of all time, and Carson knew this, and they're just an amazing bird, and he had just seen one and photographed one, and he kept DMing me like, dude, I just found a great gray owl, my hands are shaking, I can't believe this, and he was messaging me and, and just saying he, how he couldn't wait to show me the photos, and he came in the store, and we sat down and looked at those photos, and um, you could just tell, man, this dude was passionate about what he did, and he was passionate about nature and God's beautiful creations, man. And it is uh, it was a beautiful thing to see. We went through his favorite photos. He brought his laptop in, and we edited some photos, and we just talked it up, and Carson, man, you made a big impact on me, buddy. Uh, that was really awesome for me, too, to see that and to see such passion. And I'll tell you guys, like, as wildlife photographers, we work hard, but nobody freaking worked as hard as Carson, dude. <laughs> that man, let me tell you, he was out on his kayak every morning paddling miles and miles to find these shots, and he was determined And I just want to say, man, you know, apparently I was your hero, but let me tell you something, buddy. You're mine as well, dude. And to honor Carson, everybody, I just want to say that the best way to do that is just to live like Carson, man. There are few people like that. And he was kind to everybody, man. So I just encourage everybody to live every day like Carson because he was a one of a kind. I wasn't the only person that Carson impacted. Carson was friends with almost the entire wildlife photography community and the whole community loves you, man. We, we love, love you, you Carson. Carson. We love you, Carson. We love you, Carson. We love you, Carson. We love you, Carson. Love you, buddy. We love you, Carson. Carson, we love you, buddy. Love you, Carson. Thinking of you always in beautiful places. We love you, Carson. 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 Love you, Carson. Sure miss that smile. We love you, Carson. 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 And save some good shots for me up there, buddy. I really look forward to the day that we can shoot together up there, man. We're going to bring my staff up. They're going to stand here. When we exit this room, we'd like you to exit out. Let the family have their time to say goodbye. It's been an absolute honor. We love you, Carson. <laughs>